Is support Ash dead? Is LeBlanc finally pickable? And <laughs> what the heck is going on with Azir? Hey there summoners, Riot has released the full list of changes we'll be getting on patch 13.5. It can be easy to get baited into thinking a buff means something is automatically good, or a nerf means something is instantly bad, but that's definitely not always the case, and that's why I'm here to break things down a bit. We'll get started with the system changes first, since these changes are a bit broad and potentially affect the meta a lot more than any champ specific changes. This patch brings even more tuning to the jungle. This time, they're cutting down on how much experience junglers get from lane minions in the earlier parts of the game. Specifically, instead of getting 25% less experience from minions all game, they'll start out at 60% at the start of the game, with that tapering down to 25% again at 14 minutes. So now, when ganking, you won't get that extra huge boost from helping to shove in a wave. An even bigger thing to think about is the opposite. It's really common for a jungle to soak up waves when their laners die. It can make it feel like you're putting yourself behind if you pull off a successful gank and your counterpart just moves in to soak up two crashing waves, putting them up a level. Another big jungle change we have is jungle pets now giving you bonus damage in the enemy jungle instead of just your own. Counter jungling opponents is the best way you can punish them for poor pathing, and I think it's important that they don't nerf you for trying to do that. This, along with that last change, are definitely some nice choices by Riot for balancing jungle health. The next area of focus are a couple of mage items. Ever since Seraph's Embrace got a lifeline shield, the item has been insanely broken. It gives you tons of offensive and defensive power all at once, and it fits nicely onto just about any mage. It definitely needs some nerfs, but losing 10 AP and 50 HP isn't really enough to mean much here. Cosmic Drive getting 25 extra AP at the cost of all of its health is nice. This will make it better on ranged mages that buy the item for the extra mobility to kite and fight, while making it a bit weaker as an item for champs like Lilia, who like the durability and abuse it really well. Oracle Lens will be seeing its early game cooldown increase to 120 seconds, up from 90. This is definitely a needed change. Oracle Lens is up so much more often than the Yellow Trinkets that I personally swap to it on my first back in almost any role, even ADC. Free Vision Denial is just way too broken, and honestly, they could even be a bit more harsh than this with that early game cooldown. The last system changes we have are for some runes. Grasp of the Undying will grant more HP when you proc it, making you beefier later in the game. The heal is also getting a change. The ratio on it is being reduced, but a small base heal has been added on. Without getting into the math of it all too much, basically, you'll heal about the same or maybe even a bit more early on, but as the game goes on, you won't heal as much as you were before. Triumph is getting a similar treatment. The heal is being cut from 10% of your missing HP down to 5%, but now it also heals 2.5% of your max HP regardless of how healthy you are. This means that you heal more overall when you get early kills and fights, but will be getting less of a heal when you go under half HP. This can definitely hurt when you're relying on those clutch triumph procs to turn close team fights. Alright, with all that system stuff out of the way, let's take a look at the direct changes to champions. Even when Aatrox was a super dominant pick in pro play, he wasn't ever that crazy in solo queue. So, after being nerfed again and again, he's ended up in a pretty awful spot. It's nice that Riot sees that he needs some love, but what he's getting this patch won't really mean much at all. He'll still get slapped around in most lanes, and he's a champ that needs to be ahead early to do well in the mid game. Ash is getting a long overdue adjustment this patch. I personally don't think there's anything wrong with Ash support existing, but it shouldn't just completely overshadow her intended role as a bot lane carry. This should definitely be a push in the right direction to make her good there again. That said, I don't think support Ash is actually dead by any means. It won't be so insanely good, but it's definitely still a strong pick. Making Aurelion Soul a bit squishier and taking away some of his Q damage is a pretty small nerf for a champ that has so much going on. He's still going to be an absolute terror once you make it to the mid to late game. The Azir changes are really hard to break down. I know I said that's the whole reason I'm here. He has a massive wall of changes coming in. Overall, it seems to be a nerf, but there's so much being moved around that he can end up being about the same or even stronger, especially once people try new builds out. For this one, you'll definitely have to check back in with us once this patch has gone live for a more definitive answer on how good he is now. With her over-the-top range, Caitlyn will still be a big lane bully. The nerf she's getting just make it a little bit easier to go for an all-in on her when you find a chance. But as long as she's playing safe and using her traps and netwell, those opportunities are going to be pretty hard to find. The fizz buffs fall a bit flat this patch. I don't think 10 damage is ever going to make a difference. In fact, I'm pretty sure we all know just how ridiculous his one-shotting power is against squishy champs. The only issue Fizz has right now is how strong tanks and bruisers are. Giving random spot buffs like this won't change that. He's just a situational pick that you can't blind pick, which is how all assassins should be anyways. 
While Gangplank is getting nerfed this patch, he's definitely not a dead pick. I mean, honestly, there have been plenty of times in the past where GP's solo queue win rate was horrible, but most really high elo people considered him broken even then. That's just how he is. If you're truly skilled on GP, you'll always make him a broken lane bully with insane scaling. Jinx could definitely use some love right now, and while I'm glad to see her get some, it's not going to change her biggest issue. With so many tank supports being strong again, all-in bot lanes are back to being a popular winning option, and that's exactly what you don't want to be against as Jinx. So these buffs don't suddenly make her a good pick where she would have previously been a bad one. And that exact same sentiment carries over to Kennen. The thing is, Riot has always balanced Kennen around his performance as a top laner, despite him doing much better in the mid lane. Throwing all this extra damage on him isn't suddenly going to make him good up here. Against low threat tanks and juggernauts, he'll definitely be doing a bit better, but his biggest issue is that mobile bruisers can just force all ins against him non-stop. If you really like this pick, just take him to mid. Finally, LeBlanc has gotten the buff she's needed for years. Instead of just throwing out random damage here or cooldown reduction there, they're giving her more effective wave clear. Like Annie, last hitting with her Q will refund the mana and part of its cooldown. That, along with it now dealing bonus damage to minions, will make laning a lot more enjoyable for LB players. The Pantheon changes are pretty interesting. Riot is calling them an adjustment, but it just seems like massive buffs. He'll have better all-in and shorter cooldown on his Q. E's cooldown is going up, but that may be compensated. While it's not actually implemented on the PBE yet, there are files that indicate that his E may grant armor and MR scaling with your AD, making him a lot beefier in scuffles. Kiana's getting quite a nice boost to her trading power, but as with her assassin brethren Fizz, she's still not something you want to just insta-lock every game. While she does have super strong teamfighting with her ult, she still struggles to deal with tanks that disrupt her in fights. Wait to pick her until you know you can deal with the enemy comp first. I think the goal for Rammus' nerfs this patch are to decrease the solo kill potential and make him more about going for picks with the team, but I think they're missing the mark a bit. He'll still be hell for any auto attacker to deal with. Riot is labeling their rumble buffs as being aimed specifically at top lane rumble. The issue with this should be pretty obvious. Just like I said about Kinnan earlier, Rumble's a champ that just naturally struggles to deal with a lot of top lane matchups, but is super dominant in mid lane. Now, he's just going to be even more of a menace in that role. Samira is getting some movement speed back on her passive early game and trading out a bit of it from the late game. This is definitely a pretty decent buff since that extra MS early game means you'll have an easier time looking for an all in whenever you hit level 6. Late game, she's already plenty fast and won't really be missing too much. Trendomir's buff is pretty negligible, be honest. When was the last time you felt like Trend just barely won or lost a fight by that close of a margin? He spins in and either crits you to death or loses miserably trying. The nerf to Twitch's AP ratio is a pretty big blow to both support and the lesser played mid lane Twitch. He'll still definitely be a good pick if you're smart with your roams and know how to use his W well in fights, but he won't be the one-shotting machine he is at the moment in the mid game without snowballing super hard. Yorick's nerf is pretty meh. It targets such a specific part of his trading that, really, no matchups are actually going to be drastically affected. He'll just have a little bit less poke whenever he's bullying you in lane. The Zaya nerfs, on the other hand, are actually pretty huge. Buffing her base attack speed and attack speed ratio is what made her so OP in the current meta in the first place. It's hard to tell just how hard this will hit her until it's actually live, but don't count on her being in the OP or even S tier anymore. And now for the most exciting change on this patch. People have been begging for Yumi to be deleted since her release, and finally, Riot has come up with their alternative, a rework. There's a huge wall of text describing all of the changes, but I'm just here to give you the TLDR and tell you how good she'll be. Basically, the biggest goal with this change is to make Yumi better in solo queue, but not so ridiculously strong in pro play. One of the core changes they're making is to how Yumi chooses a partner. She can still attach to anyone, but the person she's been with the most will be her best friend. Yumi's abilities are a lot stronger on her best friend, and since you're going to be attached to your ADC for most of the lane phase, they're also your optimal partner later in the game. Previously, Yumi could just make bot laner miserable for her ADC, who'd be forced to lane basically 1v2 and be behind all game and then make it up later by attaching to a strong jungler or whatever other teammate and just try to 2v5 fights with them. Obviously, this was really unhealthy, so it's great to see them trying to forcibly make it not a thing. Overall, I think this rework actually looks pretty good. She'll definitely be more noob friendly and probably have a place at most levels of solo queue play, especially for people that are duoing. As for higher elo and pro play, who knows? Maybe it really will get her pushed out of play there, or maybe they'll come up with some new strats that make her just as broken as before. And lastly, we have Zed. His changes this patch seem a bit interesting. On the one hand, lowering his MR makes it seem like Riot wants him to have a tougher time laning. 
but on the other hand, they're giving him better wave clear. So do they want him to be more or less lane dominant? Honestly, not too sure what the goal is for this one. In previously close matchups, you can say that it's probably going to make a big difference missing that three magic resist, but in lanes where you were already winning and your foe tries to hang back far and respect your all in, the extra wave clear is going to give you better shoving power so you can just push in the wave and look to roam elsewhere. At the end of the day, this is probably a power neutral change. And that'll wrap things up for our 13.5 patch preview. As always, thanks for joining me for today's video. I can't wait to see you guys back in our next video, but until then, good luck out there on the rift. Later.